The story of the KPZ-70 arguably starts with Robert McNamara's hard-on for German engineering. During his time designing cars, he came to appreciate the German excellence, quote-unquote, and when he was appointed as the head of the Department of Defence, he decided to enter a new main battle tank design bureau with the Germans. This cost American and German taxpayers hundreds of millions of dollars in development, but like 50% of modern marriages, the cooperation ultimately ended in divorce. But instead of producing children that were hooked on crack and doing OnlyFans, the failure of the KPZ-70 project resulted in the Abrams and the Leopard 2, arguably two of the best NATO tanks in the world. In War Thunder though boys, the KPZ-70 is a rank 6 medium tank located at battery rating 9.3 in arcade. The mobility of the tank is pretty good with a top speed of 64km per hour going forward and reverse and a power to weight ratio of 29 horsepower per tonne. The armour of the KPZ-70 is also pretty bad, featuring no composite armour, but it does have space armour which does give it limited protection from chemical warheads. Like the Tiger tank suspension and the engines of the HE-177 medium slash dive bomber, the KPZ-70 was also massively over-engineered. With the driver being located in the turret of the tank, a special seat had to be designed so that the driver was always facing forward even if the turret had been rotated. The main gun was also arguably over-engineered, with the ability to fire anti-tank guided missiles being a main design requirement. This led to a tank gun that was very large in diameter but short and stubby, and with the Shulele missile being dropped by use by American forces, the short barrel of the tank led to some very bad ballistics for the already in use traditional tank ammunition. Luckily though in War Thunder we do get the Shulele with 431mm of penetration, and we also have the XM57 8E1 round APFSDS shell with over 280mm of pen at point blank range. The main gun is also stabilised, we also have smoke shells, as well as the addition of a 20mm cannon located on top of the vehicle. The tank does have night vision equipment, but no thermal imaging. Overall the KPC-70 isn't the best vehicle in War Thunder, it's got mediocre firepower at best, while its mobility is good, its no armour and crew of three men does leave it incredibly vulnerable on the battlefield.